Hello there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I did a video uh, a few weeks ago on world building. Uh, be sure to check that one out. Um, I, I did some basics on, uh, on how to create a world, your own world. And uh, I've also done videos on economies, governments, other aspects of building your campaign. You have to have a world to play in that your players not only can understand, but that they enjoy playing in. Okay. And this particular video deals with a necessity in the game that is often overlooked. People skim through it or whatever. And I thought I would do a video which might save you some work as a young dungeon master. I'm not saying this is how you have to do it. I'm giving you advice. This is how I do it. And it works pretty well. Um, and this should save you some work or at least some research. The size or population of population centers is an important aspect. And now all of the following that I'm going to talk about are centers of trade. That's very, very important. Any city is a center of trade. That's in the, in the, in the medieval world, in the old world, cities didn't form out of nothing for nowhere, you know, out of, out in the middle of nowhere for no reason. They, 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 there was a reason it was there. It's along a trade route. It was an oasis in the desert. They, a city formed around it. It was, uh, uh, there's, there's mines or something, anything. But that's where cities develop. Villages, towns, and cities. This is what I'm going for. Um, a village is usually between 20 and 500 inhabitants. Uh, a, a village the size of 20 people is, is very, very rare. A village the size of 500 is very, very rare. A typical village is usually about 250 people. That's typical. Uh, basically 75 households or about 100 buildings. And usually pretty pretty compact. Um, villages are usually economically challenged with much of the commerce conducted in trade instead of coinage. So if your players show up at this tiny little village and they, they start flashing gold around, a lot of the people won't, won't trust it because they may not have ever seen one. Okay. Um, villages are usually, silver might be better, but gold, that, that, that would be pushing it. Copper is usually what they trade in, or, you know, I'll trade you this cow for those five sheep or whatever, that kind of thing. Villages are usually self-sufficient, being able to feed and clothe themselves with a good water source and with a few basic industries. They usually have a mill or a smith and, you know, like that. Or there's another village down the road that that has the what they don't have and they can trade with them, that kind of thing. Um... Villages are usually governed by a few respected villagers, either advising a recognized chieftain or sitting on a council of some kind. Uh, sometimes the wise woman in the village is the, the village elder, you know, that kind of thing. Villages may be based loosely on extended family or clan type of a situation. You know, my cousin lives right in that house. My cousin, other cousin lives over there, that kind of thing. <laughs> Duncan McLeod of the clan McLeod, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so when, when you're designing a village, these are usually places where characters can maybe find a place to sleep overnight, get some fresh supplies, you know, buy some food, that kind of thing. Or, you know, my, my horse went lame. I need to, I need a new one. I'll trade you this one for that one. And this one will heal up. You know, I'll, I'll trade you my horse that's lame for, you know, it, it's hurt and it's going to take a while to heal. I'll trade you this horse for that good horse but I'll also throw in some coins or whatever. That kind of thing. Um, a town is a little bigger. It's usually between 500 and 8,000 inhabitants. And there, again, 500, a, a town of 500 is not, is pretty rare. A town of 8,000 is really rare. A typical town was about 4,000 people generally about a mile square, about 640 acres, and which does not include the local farms and the ranches necessary to provide for the townspeople because you have the town, which is the center of commerce, and then all the villages and, and like that around it, the, the, the farms and the ranches and stuff that they come in there to trade. And there's villages around towns as well. Um, 
And this is all contained within that one mile area because everything has to be within walking distance. Everything in a town has to be within walking distance. Uh, usually there's about 20 to 30 structures per acre and there's 640 acres in a square mile. So you can, you can have a pretty good sized town. Towns are generally founded in areas where natural resources permit gold or other mines, lumber mills, farmland, a river crossing, that kind of thing. Towns usually generate most of the income for the inhabitants from the resources in the area, mines, lumber, farms, ranches, etc. Town governments, and, and by generating revenue for from a farm would be granaries, uh, warehouses, some sort of a shipping situation, people, you know, like a, like a Teamsters Guild or something like that. And towns are where you start getting your guilds, by the way. The, a guild won't go to a village, but they'll they'll go to a village, but they won't set up in a village. They'll go they'll set up in towns and things like that where they can make money. Uh, town governments are usually councils or an elected mayor or some other equivalent, a burgermeister, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> there are stories in the old west, and the, I, I want to I got to reiterate this. There's a story in the old west of a settler. He's, he's in his wagon, he's driving along, he's part of a wagon train, and as he's crossing the river, his wagon breaks down. So basically he, he you know, he's like, damn it, and he, and he gets out and he, 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 he can't fix his wagon, so he's stuck there. Nobody else can help him, so they go on. This guy sets up shop right there, selling his supplies out of the back of his wagon. Eventually, he builds a shop, and eventually a town builds up around his shop. <laughs> so at that river crossing, the only one in the area he has a successful business and the town built up around it. You know, the trading post became a town, essentially. Um, and that's, that, is, that, that has happened more than once in the Old West. A city is usually considered a very large town with from 4,000 to 750,000 inhabitants. The, the largest city in the known world, I think, in the Old World, ancient, the medieval world, was Ming Peking, and it was around 600,000 people. So, but we're in a, in a fantasy setting, so your town, your, your, your big city could be up to a million people. I mean, it's up to you how you want to do it. I usually do 750,000. That's a good round number. Uh, capital cities are usually going to be larger than regular, than, than other major cities. Usually, uh, these cities had about 40 to 50 structures per acre and commanded multiple industries and income sources the urban area farms ranches etc to support the city would be huge usually about 10 times the the number of city inhabitants because if a city like that farming and ranching is big industry it's not just feeding the people it's got to be big enough to where they can export grain and, and livestock and like that Butcher shops are big too because they export meat, and you know you salt meat, you know uh, smoked meat and like that is a commodity, especially if you're on a coastal area where the, the people have to go out on the on the ocean in big ships. Uh, if you're and also if you're on the coast, fishing is a big industry as well. I'm just saying, this is stuff to consider. Get the the old creative juices flowing, as it were. A city state is an independent nation of one large city with several villages around it, including ranches, farms, and industry. It is a nation, that one city is a nation unto itself. Um, a nation or country is composed of one or more cities, multiple towns, and many villages organized into a country. Um, obviously, the smaller the smaller villages trade with the towns, the towns trade with the, 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 the big cities. Okay? And the ruler is in the whoever, whatever his title, Raja, King, Emperor, whatever, is in the the main the main capital. The ruler, uh, and and these, by the way, the inhabitants of this are generally united by common descent, history, culture, or language. Or it could be they were conquered. You don't know. I mean, it's up to you. You make the world how you want it. You're the dungeon master. You know. And the ruler, the king, Raja, whatever rules from the capital city and his representatives rule the other cities most towns most times in a feudal society there's elections are not held they may at the very 
small local level, but as far as you know, who runs that town? Well, I'm going to send my my cousin, the 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 Duke, I'm going to let him run that town over there. You know that kind of thing. Um, and the the bigger the city, the more important the royal that runs it. Um, it's well this this whole system any kind of a big nation like that is well organized with shared laws and customs an empire for those of you who don't know an empire is composed of multiple nations or countries and is ruled by an emperor or an empress so essentially three or four kingdoms they unite under the banner of one emperor that's the difference between an empire and a kingdom a kingdom is I'm the king. I rule this. These you know these cities. I'm the, I rule this nation. An empire is composed of multiple nations. When you get into the nations and countries and empires, you get into national currency. Here's something else that needs to be talked about. The gold coins you got from the ancient ruins in country A may not be legal tender in country B. Money changers generally charge in my world two percent. I think they do something like that in the Dungeon Master's Guide as well. But they generally charge 2% to take those worthless gold coins there and replace them with these legal gold coins here. Yeah. <laughs> worthless gold coins. And, of course, he's going to melt them down and turn them into his, you know, his his own coinage. So, you know. Some nations, or, or he'll melt them down and turn them into gold ingots so that he can barter with them. That kind of thing. Some nations or countries have banks which will hold coinage and other valuables for citizens. Here's the kicker. You have to be a citizen. That's generally the rule with banks. Now, if you pay enough, they'll overlook that, but I'm just saying. And this service is usually costly between 2 and 10% or more. Interest rates do not apply. So essentially, you're paying them to store your money, your gold, that, that is very heavy and you can't carry around. I came out with a wagon load of gold, but I can't carry it. Well, guess what? Oh, look, you're friend the bank. And that's basically how banks started. They were warehouses where uh, people would store money, and the, the people who stored it for them would take a cut. That's essentially how it works. And then they, you do not earn interest in these banks. <laughs> that That's an advanced banking system that doesn't exist yet. And remember, the main, main rule, ultimately, this is your world. How you organize it and map it out is completely up to you. The more preparations you make regarding the areas your player characters can possibly travel into, the less improvisation and ad-libbing you will need to do. I cannot stress enough that your player characters will invariably go the opposite way from whatever adventure you've designed. This is nothing new. Players have been doing that forever and they they may not even intend to do it but if they find out they have done it they'll be ecstatic they'll laugh in your face i've had players laugh in my face well we're we're traveling and we're well my i designed the adventure over there well <laughs> you know that kind of thing the trick is always to seem seem prepared especially when you aren't <laughs> that's the trick <laughs> okay I hope this finds everybody well, and I hope this information is useful, and I'm not trying to say, this is how you have to do it. This is this is how I do it, and it works well, and I'm trying to help out some of the younger Dungeon Masters, because Lord knows we need more players, and we need more Dungeon Masters to help them play. So, you know, if this helps one, I'm happy. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all.